All right, gang, here we go. Uh, physics, unit one, part two. Okay, so we finished, part one was covering all the chapter one stuff in the textbook. This is, uh, part two is gonna be the beginning of chapter two material, and we're gonna be talking about motion in one dimension. So really, we're just gonna be talking about motion that's going straight up or down, motion that's going straight left and right. Okay, next unit, we're gonna start talking about the units that are doing both left and right and up and down, and just kinda, we'll be working in, you know, two dimensions, all right? Um, so we're going to talk about uh, displacement, velocity, and how to read motion graphs in this video. Right? So one-dimensional motion. So how would you define motion? So think about that for a second. Motion is movement, right? Okay. So movement, specifically in physics, we're going to be talking about movement in one direction. Uh, and the idea is that if we can represent movement in one direction, then we know how to do the math for that. And that's kind of the idea behind physics is we want to take ideas and be able to represent them mathematically. All right now how can we tell if something is moving or not all right so <clears throat> so think about this for a second um so if you're standing here on the earth and just sit there in your desk or stand or whatever you're doing and just sit there for a minute and try not to move okay and now are you moving okay well in relation to your desk you're not moving but if you think about yourself in relation to uh, the sun then you're definitely moving in fact you're moving quite quickly okay um, if you're sitting on a train that's going and you know somebody's sitting next to you on the train in relation to that person you're not moving but in relation to somebody that might watch you go by while they're waiting for the train to pass uh, you know so they can go through at the a railroad crossing then you then you're actually moving right so in physics we use what are called a frame of reference okay and so this reference point is very important it's where we do all of our measuring okay and it doesn't really matter where you set it you just always need to be consistent consistent for the most part it's going to be pretty obvious where it is but always kind of have that in the back of your head about where we've established our reference point okay so for example as a train traveling between stations it's in motion when you're measuring its motion in relation to the points on the track as it goes by but when you're measuring it against the seats it's not moving at all okay <clears throat> now displacement is what happens if an object is moved and it ends in a different place than where it began Okay, so not all movement happens to be displacement. If I take this pen and I throw it up and then it comes right back down to my hand, then um, it's, it's moved, right? It's, it's gone up and it's come down, but it didn't experience any displacement. It started here, went up, and then came back down here to the exact, the exact same spot. Okay, so, um, so, you're all, so not all movement is displacement, but all displacement is movement. Okay. Uh, displacement is defined as the straight line distance from the initial position to the final position. So if you, you know, you're trying to get from point A, if two people are trying to get from point A to point B, and one person goes like this, okay, and we'll just say they move 20 feet, okay, um, and then another person, you know, is like, oh, I forgot something at the grocery store, and then they go over here to their friend's house, and then they come down here, you know, they, they might have moved, you know, 80 feet to go from point A to point B, but both of these people have the same displacement, okay? Uh, this person, like, they could have done that, as, you know, a third person could have done that, okay? It doesn't really matter, okay, as far as displacement is concerned, what the path is, okay? So it's independent of path. Independent from or of path, all right? So it doesn't matter what path they took, it just matters where they started and where they finished, okay? Um, and finally, displacement can be positive or negative, and we'll talk about that in just a second. Just know that you can be displaced positively or negatively, and we'll talk about on the next slide what exactly that means. Okay, but first, write down this formula, okay, this guy right here. So displacement, that's delta x, okay? So delta means change in x, okay? is equal to x final, okay, so that's their final position, final position, and then this guy is their initial position, all right? So just, oh, and they also give it to you a word form here, displacement is equal to change in position or final minus initial, okay, so that's your very first physics formula, okay? Now, next unit, we're going to talk about things called vectors. Okay, and they're going to make uh, life both easier and more complicated at the same time, but that's okay. So for right now, though, we're just going to go with these definitions. If you're moving to the right, or moving, if you hear, see somebody's moving east, then we make that positive. If they're moving left or west, it's negative. Okay, 
probably shouldn't underline it, then it looks like an equal sign. Okay, positive, negative. If they're moving up or north, it's positive. If they're moving down or south, it's negative. So think like a graph. So if you've got a graph that looks like this, okay, and you've got your x's and your y's, right? And you know your x values are over here, they're positive, and they're negative over here, and your y's are positive here, and they're negative here. Okay, same idea. If we move to the right, then we're getting positive x values. If we're going north, then we're getting positive y values, negative, negative. Okay, <clears throat> so if I start, well, let's do this real quick. So if we have this ruler here, so this, so we want to find the displacement. Well, remember, displacement is equal to delta x is equal to x final minus x initial. Okay, so if we want to find the di displacement for this guy here, we need to know the initial position. Well, it started here. Notice that the arrow is showing you to move to the right. So it started here. Okay, so it started at uh, 10, and they don't really give us units. So we'll just go unitless. So we know it's 10, and then we're going to subtract off the x initial. <coughs> or I'm sorry, I'm fouling up. It's x final minus x initial. So we've got our final, which is 80. Okay, and we're going to subtract off our x initial, which is 10. Okay, so this was our x final, it's even labeled for us on our x initial over here. So we say final minus initial, so we know it moved 70 units. Notice that we also know it, had, it came up with a positive value. So that positive, remember from the last slide, positive means it moved to the right, and sure enough that's what the arrow tells us it did as well. Now if we try the other one, remember our delta x is equal to x final minus x initial. So x final is over here, and that's 20. Okay, and We're going to subtract out our x initial. Right, which is our 80 value right here. So we're going to subtract out 80, and we end up with negative 60. Okay, so we were displaced negative 60 units. Notice once again we end up with this negative value here. That negative value tells us that we moved either down or to the left. Since we know we're moving horizontally, we know that because of that negative value, it had to have gone to the left. All right, so positive to the right, negative to the left. Okay, now we have average velocity. The average velocity is the displacement divided by the time interval. So we're really just trying to figure out how fast we did that uh, displacement. Okay, so uh, velocity average. Remember, this is our delta x, which means displacement. Okay, so this is displacement. All right, and then delta t is the change in time. Okay, <clears throat> so this is our formula. Second formula you'll get in physics. Okay, here it is in words. Average velocity is equal to the change in position divided by the change in time, or the displacement divided by the time, er time interval. Okay, uh, potential units of velocity. Well, we always know it has to be displacement, so that's a distance. Okay, so that means we could have kilometers, or we could have uh, meters, or centimeters, or furlongs, or you know stuff like that, right? And the, so that has to be one of our top units. The one of those has to be our top unit. And then our bottom unit always has to be a time. So it could be hours or seconds or days or you know so on and so forth. So some possible units made out of these could be like uh, kilometers per hour or uh, meters per second or yeah, so on and so forth. Okay, so let's do practice. So a car travels 36 kilometers to the north. So it started somewhere, went to the north, 36 kilometers. All right, and it took 30 minutes for it to happen. Okay, so 36 kilometers from north and, and 30 minutes. So notice that it says to the north. So I would make a note to yourself. Okay, so it says north, so we know that it's going to be a positive value. Now, if it said 36 kilometers to the south, we know it had to be a negative value. We'd have to add that number in ourselves. Okay, so uh, velocity average is equal to delta x over delta t. All right, delta x was our 36 because we started here. Now remember when we talked about frames of reference, that means we can decide what our frame of reference is going to be. So that means we're going to say, well, this is 0. All right, we're going to start at 0. We're going to get to 36. Okay, So delta x is final minus initial. So 36 minus 0 over our delta t. So we started at time 0, and this is our uh, final time. right? So 30 minus 0. So we get 36. Oops, 36 divided by 30. Which gives us, uh, I believe, 36 divided by 30. We get 1.2. Okay. Now we got to think about our units for a second. So, uh, units on the distance was kilometers. Units on our time were minutes. So kilometers per minute. All right. Then, so that answers that part of the question. That's nice. So now we got to answer the next part here. So, and in kilometers per hour. So we have 1.2 kilometers 
per minute. Now we got to convert this to kilometers per hour. Well, our kilometers are going to stay the same, so we don't have to worry about that. So we only have to convert our minutes. So we'll put minutes up here. We'll put hours down here. So how many minutes are in an hour? Well, there's 60 minutes in one hour. So we're going to multiply this 1.2 times 60. Well, 6 times 12 is 72. Uh, so we get 70. Oops. 72 kilometers per hour. Okay. All right. Now let's try this one on your own. Go ahead and pause the video, give it a shot, see what you come up with. Okay. So a car travels 100 kilometers to the east. If the first half of the distance is driven at 50 kilometers per hour and the second half at 100 kilometers per hour, what is the average velocity? So remember, uh, velocity average, if you're ever stuck with where to start, always just write down the formula. What is the average velocity? Well, we know the formula for average velocity is equal to delta x over delta t right delta x over delta t well we know how far we traveled delta x is 100 kilometers right so that's our delta x okay so we're going to put 100 in the bottom so all we need to need to know well is how long this travel took well let's let's draw a sketch it out real quick real quick okay so we traveled 100 kilometers in total right we went from here should draw arrows we went from here to here and it took 100 kilometers it says the first half of the distance first half of the distance. So going from 0 to 50, we went uh, 50 kilometers per hour. And from 50 to 100, we went 100 kilometers per hour. Okay, and we need to know how long it took for us to get there. So if we take um, 50 kilometers and we divide it by, how, by, our time, by our speed, 50 kilometers, our velocity, we'll get the amount of time. So 50 uh, divided by 50, so that gave us one hour. Okay, so it took us one hour to go the first half. Okay, the second half was another 50 kilometers, and but we were going 100 kilometers per hour. Okay, so 50, so we get 0.5. So it took us an hour and a half in total to get from one point to another. So we say 1.5 hours. So the delta x here will be kilometers and our time here will be hours. So 100 divided by 1.5. So we get 66.666 repeating. Okay, so let's think about 6667 uh, kilometers per hour. Let's think about sig figs real quick. So this number here, so this is division, right? So we got to think about, so we just got to count the least number of sig figs, and that's how many sig figs our answer can have. So this number here, uh, it's 100.0 has 4, okay. Uh, 50 kilometers per hour has 3, and this guy has 4, so that means our answer can only have 3, so we'll round it to this digit. 6 here makes this 6 round up, so we get 66.7 kilometers per hour. Cool. All right, good job. Give yourself a huge pat on the back if you're able to get that on your own. All right, now so there's a difference between speed and velocity. Okay, speed does not include a direction. Think about it this way: if you have a you have a speedometer on your car, right? Speedometer. Okay, if you're going north, your speedometer doesn't say you're going, you know, 30 miles per hour positively. And if you turn around and start going south back the way you came, it doesn't suddenly say it's negative 30. Okay, that's kind of the way I remember it. Our cars have speedometers or speedometers, not velocitometers. They don't tell you the velocity; they tell you your speed. Okay, so when you calculate speed, they can use their distance traveled, not their displacement. Okay, remember velocity was displacement over time, speed is their distance traveling over time. So think about it this way, if you're going a round trip, right? So if I go um, from my house to the gas station and back again, okay? My car, my average speed might be somewhere around 20 miles per hour, if that, you know, you actually go the gas station is pretty close and it's through residential okay so but um, my velocity in my round trip is actually zero right because I started and ended in the same place so my displacement is zero okay think about the Indianapolis 500 those cars go upwards of 200 miles per hour right but really they just kinda go around and 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 around over and over again now the distance they travel is actually quite high right and their time there's their time that they're using is actually quite short so that's why they're going like 200 miles per hour the speedometer tells them that but really if you think about their velocity if they start and end in the same place right here on the starting and finishing line then their displacement displacement 
is equal to zero. And if their displacement is equal to zero, then their velocity, remember velocity average, is equal to displacement over delta t. Okay, if their displacement is equal to zero, you get zero divided by however, however much time it took them. Anything, zero divided by anything is always equal to zero. So next time you're having lunch with your favorite Indianapolis 500 driver, you can give them a hard time telling them that, man, there's a, you know, it's kind of surprising that this is even a sport with all you guys just kind of uh, having a velocity of zero and see if they uh, hit you or not. Okay, a couple other things here. So graphing motion. So when we're graphing motion, uh, we're always going to put time in the denominator. Time always, 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 always goes down here. Okay, and in this case, we're going to talk about position. Okay. <clears throat> now, so the way you read this is so whatever this motion was, this this object at two seconds had gone uh, two meters, right, more or less, two point zero meters. Okay. At four seconds, this object had gone four meters, right. At eight seconds, this object had gone eight meters. Eight, at eight seconds, it had gone eight meters. Okay, so it's pretty easy to read that graph. Okay, um, so it has a constant speed because this line is straight. Okay, so this line is straight, so it's got constant speed. Okay, if your speed changed, the line would start to go curving. We'll look at an example of that here in a second. Okay, the slope of this line. Is uh, so, so remember we take rise. Oh, it's written down here. So we have rise over run. So it's the change in the vertical coordinates over the change in the horizontal coordinates. Okay. So if we were going to do one of these, uh, so change in the vertical components. So we'll do uh, four to zero. So it went from four minus zero over, and uh, so that's four. So four minus zero. So we get one meters per second. Okay. So this notice this unit here right meters per second that tells you that it's the velocity okay remember how we talked about how a velocity is always a change in distance over a change in, or change in displacement which is measured in length okay over change in time okay so anytime you're looking at a graph of motion where you have position on the y and time in the x the, if you find the slope of that line really you're getting the velocity Let's see. So describe the motion of each. Oops, sorry. Describe the motion of each object based in the graph. So if we've got object one, <clears throat> okay. So he's got constant velocity, right? How do we know that? Well, it's a straight line, okay. And he's going to the right or upward. So whatever it is, he's going um, positive. So this is a, a positive slope, okay, which means he's got a positive velocity positive velocity. Notice that his position is also positive. So if we were going to graph this guy on a chart, okay, we'll say object one, okay, so he started at, oh, we'll say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, okay, so one, two, three, so he started at uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, we'll just draw a bunch of them here. Okay, so we'll say this is zero. Now uh, let's say this is zero. Okay, so uh, he started at three. Okay, that's object one, and he's going uh, to the right. Okay, with a positive. Uh, he's going to the right with a constant speed, so he's just going to be traveling uh, this way, right? Now, uh, so that's object one. We'll call him O one. Okay, object one is traveling to the right with constant speed. Okay, object two is traveling with zero speed. So he's at like four-ish, okay? So this is object two. Now notice how he's just sitting there and it's, since it's horizontal, completely flat, uh, the rise over the run, well, it's not changing, so the rise is zero. The run is whatever it is, okay? And so this is always gonna be equal to zero, so he has zero velocity. So object two is just gonna be sitting right there at about four. Object three, though, is going to start just a little bit to the right okay of this guy here okay so that's object three but notice that he has a negative slope right negative slope so because it's got a negative slope that means he's going to the left okay so object three is going to be going this way i'll we'll say that's object three all right so object three is going to the left because he's got a negative slope notice that his position is also going down 
So that tells you so that if this is our position graph down here, this number line that I kind of jotted down, it, those numbers are going to be getting closer and closer to zero. Eventually, as long as he keeps going the way he is, will be he'll be negative. He'll have negative position. So that means he'll be farther to the left of whatever they use as their reference point for their zero. Okay. Now, uh, last little bit here, instantaneous velocity. Okay. So um, in this graph here, notice that our position graph is curved. Okay. When he got to 10 meters, he was like, you know, somewhere between uh, 2 and 3 seconds, you know, 2.35 or 2.3 seconds or something like that. All right. Uh, but when he got to 20 second, 20 meters, okay, he was a lot closer to 3. If I could draw straight up and down, that'd be helpful. Okay, he'd be a lot closer to 3 meters. Okay, so his velocity is not constant because it's curved. The velocity is changing. Okay. Now, in order to find the average velocity at a specific moment, we have to find the slope of the tangent. So remember, remember when in geometry, probably you were talking about circles, and you talked about like a tangent line is a line that comes through and just touches your circle at one point. Okay, so it doesn't cross your circle; it just barely touches at one point. So when we draw, um, when we take the graph of a tangent line then we're taking our slope and we're drawing an imaginary straight line that's just going to hit it at the time we care about. Okay, so this dashed line right here, let me erase my little sketches here. Oop, I don't want the pen. All right, so if we erase these guys here. Um, so notice, so right here, at it looks like three seconds is what they were measuring. So they wanted to know the velocity or the average velocity at three seconds. Okay, so they had to take a slope of the tangent line at three seconds, and they found that it was 12 meters per second. So if you were taking this slope here, and we found the slope of this line here, so that dot right there, maybe we do like a dot over here. Okay, <clears throat> we'd find out that it should be roughly around 12 meters per second. And that tells us what the average velocity is for that specific moment in time. Or, since it's a specific moment in time, we call it the instantaneous velocity. All right. So this is what speedometers in our cars do, right? Because when it, and even when you set the cruise control, your speed is going to be varying very slightly. So your speedometer has to measure the, how fast the wheels are turning and then compare that to what or and then take the instantaneous velocity of that specific moment in time okay so that's the end of unit or part one okay uh, do lots of practice problems the math in this part this is where we're going to start really getting into physics math so make sure you do lots of practice problems in this part okay also be sure you're familiar with uh, reading these these graphs these motion graphs okay there's a good a really good practice set in the packet all right let me know if you have any questions